Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to episode two of our Space Age playthrough. Still really excited about this. Uh, I hope I'm excited until the very last episode. But uh, yeah, we have not done too much since the last episode, just kind of derped around a bit. We've got some more science, but haven't set anything else up. I would like, I did craft some more things, but I want to set up belts next, because we got some basic automation in the last episode, but now I would like some better you know i might not do splitters in fact i might just do transport belts um so we'll need gears like this and then we can just put iron in there oh by the way did we do this i can't remember what we did on video and off video that's a constant problem of mine uh fish spoil which is crazy i don't remember if we grabbed fish in the video i don't think we did so now, now you uh, can't just have fish forever. I have to not bump into the microphone with my coffee. All right, so that should be it for belts. Gosh, this new interface, even though it's only a little bit different, it's wigging me out to see an item over here. Oop, that's a ghost out of iron chests. Okay, so there we go. We'll get some belts going. Hey, ever closing bar. Welcome, welcome. Is there a spaghetti slash cleanliness goal? Um, medium. Uh, I don't mind some spaghetti, but I also don't like. I don't want to try to rush things and just skip over clean builds forever because eventually that will uh, come back to bite me in the butt with technical debt. Especially because Space Age is a much longer... Do I need that? I don't need that much brick. What am I doing? Uh, Space Age is a much longer ordeal than... You know what I need that I'm not doing is just putting some stone in a box. Um, yeah, so because the Space Age playthrough is going to be a lot longer, I want to make sure to not go full spaghetti because I think... Once you go full spaghetti, it can be hard to undo it. So, we will, we will not do that. Okay, so that will accumulate plenty of stone for me. So we can make more stone furnaces. I'm thinking we'll make smelting stacks in this episode. I will go for a full yellow belt, because then that's easy to transition to a full red belt with steel furnaces. Also notice... The crafting speed of one has that little diamond pip, and that means that we're gonna be able to improve the crafting speed of these with quality, which is awesome. So, yeah, very excited about quality. There's still parts of me that are apprehensive about it for, you know, there were there were many valid questions and concerns about quality when they, when they, um, announced it and I think a lot of the questions people had are valid and I'm curious how things will play out and feel overall I think it's going to be good given the response from other people that we've heard who have played with it but I still am in eager to play with it myself uh, okay so as far as red pack only this is pretty much it I might as well do damage and attack speed because we have enough packs for that but You like to start in a way that's completely unsustainable to force you... See, the problem is, if I do that, I'll find a way to sustain it. I'll keep putting band-aids on the unsustainable base to make it sustainable, and then I just keep doing that forever, and it's horrible, and I don't want to end up in that spot. So, I need to be careful with that. <laughs> I need to be very careful. Alright, so let's actually do this mining thing the right way. Here. And we're gonna craft a lot more of these drills. I actually ran out of plates. Yeah, legendary wooden poles. That's certainly a vibe. Soon we will replace this iron smelting, but don't quite need to. 
Oh, I also realized we should cap the gears that this makes. And then some more iron for belts. That is iron for gears and for circuits. And this is iron for science. But we already have a crap ton, actually. So I think we're good on all of that. Let's just take everything that my my minions have made me. There we go. Okay, so I assume the ratio is still the same, right? Because the crafting speed is the same of 3.2. So if we're going to be consuming 15 per second and it takes 3.2 seconds, you need 15 times 3.2, right? So that turns out to be exactly 48. So yeah, that's the same. I still need a crap ton of these. Legendary used up uranium fuel cell. Yeah, that that will certainly be a goal. I'm not sure though if we can make those. I don't know if those will have quality. Like if you, if you make a legendary fuel cell, will it just spoil into a regular fuel cell? Or a regular used up fuel cell. Uh, which is a question I don't yet know the answer to. Alright, and I'm going to preemptively belt coal. Um, let's see. How do I want to do this? So, Nalvis is going to have sciences. There will be more there. I'll belt the coal up here so it kind of goes past the science. Or power. Yeah, we can test it with an uncommon one. For sure. Alright, and... I normally... Eh, I normally would go, like, and then come along with it so that it can grow forever, but I can always just make an empty space for this. Okay. Get this belt here. And then fill those with 50 coal. Hopefully that lasts long enough. Yeah, the new blueprints look really cool and they're they're much more visible. So I do think the blue ghosts mod is going to feel uh, a lot less necessary for sure. Let's get some real coal mining going. Cool. Okay, so we got stone, we got coal. That should be plenty of coal, right? These mine... Two per second. A coal is four megajoules still, so that's eight. Um, megajoules. Oh, I don't have splitters. Uh, eight megawatts total, basically, that they can generate power for. And power used to be only like 50% efficient and whatnot, but that's not a thing anymore. So, don't need to worry about that. Um... Red science, 102 backed up, so we should probably craft some more labs. Four, one, two, three, four. That would get me 12 labs. And then some more belts, so we can get coal over to let's see, output priority left. So power first. This one can just split 50-50 between that chest and then the furnace stacks, which will be over there. So that works fine. We come over here. So this will be coal. And yeah, I think we'll extend the base to the east for now. 
Pollution is definitely a thing that I have not been paying attention to. I'm going to craft a few more gun turrets to put them in key positions in case of attack. And I probably should grab some iron and craft more bullets. Aw, oh, thanks, NRD. Welcome, welcome. Navis has not seemed to have any new music. It's all sounded like the same as before, so far, to me, anyway. All right, I do want mining drills of the electric type on the hotbar. Actually put those there. And you're gonna make ammo. Oh, there's the parameters that we'll have to try out when the time comes. All right, so we'll make some bullets with that. And then, yeah, gun turrets are most likely to be needed on the mining hatches. I don't really know where the biters are yet, either. But, as of now, that is still not receiving any pollution, but it will be soon. We're going over the trees now. And I could build a radar, so why don't we do that? To start scanning the world. We'll build one in this corner of the base, down here. And then I'll build another one in the northeast. Oh yeah, thank you, I need to switch weapons there. And then we will get rid of the pistol in a ceremony. Goodbye, pistol. We hardly knew ye. Never used. Uh, it's 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 out, but it's not out. It's uh kind of kind of sad for the public, but yeah, the media access keys are live. So, how bitey is the map? Uh, not very bitey. Uh, I'm on normal settings, and at least in our starting revealed area, we've only got three nests. But there might be some more lurking nearby. We'll see. Uh, we'll get another radar up here. To start revealing the world. Uh, because we're making the move to powered mining, we're going to need a lot more power for that. He's set up. I need a single pipe. And there you go. Um, so what's the consumption? These still do 60 per second, and that is still that's 1,200. So you can still only do 20 boilers. Beautiful coffee. Just build a roboport instead of a radar. Hey, they only have two chunks of coverage. But yeah, the roboports having radar coverage now is so cool. I love that change. I really do. Uh, I'm going to need some more trees, actually. Where are they? Over here. Two hundred water is nerfed. Water is nerfed. What? Oh, 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 oh! Right, right. Steam. You make ten steam for every one water now. Right. So then. Okay, hold on. What does this mean? What does this mean for the numbers? The numbers, Mason. Uh, so these are consuming thirty steam, which means only three water. Oh yeah, those are only consuming six water each. Oh my gosh. So you can basically have infinity boilers on one. One measly, uh, whatchamacallit, pump, offshore pump. That's crazy. That is crazy. I, 
I, okay, so I do still have a complaint. That ghost... It's... I, I think they're technically different now, but the ghost uh, power network that isn't built yet is still very much visually feeling the same as the non-ghost network, and that just makes it really hard to see where power actually is and where power is planned to be but isn't yet when you're working with a lot of ghosts. Hey, no. That's the wrong spot. Okay, so there's 12 science places. 200 equals infinity. It sure does. You know, it's a convenient, convenient thing. With the 250 tile limit, you'll need to put the early power closer. You yeah, know, that is a good point, because we don't have pumps yet. 250 tiles is a lot, though. Um, it's like a lot, a lot. I don't even know if this whole width is 250 tiles altogether. I would think it might not be, or it's about that. So y you can go pretty far with your early game water still, just not forever. Um, why is this not filling up more? Like, I just put a bunch in there, but it only had, like, 20-something. I guess it just took the belt a while to back up. What's going on here? I guess. Yeah. Okay, so let's work on Iron Stack. So, we have two options here with our iron smelting stack. I mean, there's far more than two ways to do this, but we could bring the iron and coal from the outside and then make a belt of iron on the inside. Or we bring the iron and coal on the inside and we make a belt on the outside of iron plates. Now, productivity... There are productivity researches now. But that's for steel, low density structure, blue chips, plastic. It doesn't look like there's one for iron. So what that means is we're not just gonna randomly have like 10% iron productivity. And that means I'm not gonna rant. So what I'm trying to say here is at least with stone and steel furnaces, we're always gonna have one to one iron ore to iron plates. So it doesn't really matter if we go in to out or out to in. Because um, either way, we're going to have a full belt. So I think I will go with... Also, I'm trying to remember. Thanks for the follow, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Can we do... I don't need medium poles, do I? We can do this version just fine, right? I need long inserters, um, which I have not started making. I need 48 of them. I might only do half the, the furnace stack for now, and then we'll do half later, because I don't want to make 48. And then we need way more than that. I might need, not even do half. I might do a third. What's this? Six? Twelve? We'll start with 12, and then that we'll just do that four times. Because really, I need to get, like, the mall going and stuff like that. That's higher priority than having a full belt of iron. Um, all right, so then we'll do... I have to do it this way for the long inserters. Yeah, okay. We got that. Long inserters go on the hot bar. There we go, and then the power, bada bing, bada boom, bada bing. And the outputs. Perfect. Okay, so then I will just make sure to not build anything in this region. We'll bring the coal up. And over. Obviously, we'll have to split it off for, like, copper stuff later. But 
Oh yeah, filter yellow inserters. That's a thing now too. Forgot about that. We pyanodons now. But yeah, we can we can filter stuff. I like that use filters is a setting now. Um, rather than inherently calling it because what pyanodons did is it defaulted to blacklisting nothing. And that was uh, that got me in trouble multiple times. I'll just say it that way. Because basically the reason it, it was problematic is because I was like, oh, I want to because when you build a filter inserter, all you have to do is set the filter to the item you want. So that's what I would do with the with the inserters is I would set the filter to the item I want. But because it was default on blacklist, oh, now I'm blacklisting the item I want. And that was uh, problematic to say the least. So I'm glad that that's actually a separate button to enable the filtering altogether. It is more clicking, um, but most of the time with inserter filtering, you're, you're doing a lot of copy settings and whatnot. So I think it'll be okay. I mean, worst case scenario, you can also just blueprint a, uh, I need copper. You can blueprint a single inserter that already has that setting checked. And then when you build it, it'll already be checked. All right, and Conblim, we will get your name in game. Don't worry, I've not forgotten about you. What is spoiled priority? Oh yeah, 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 so that's a whole thing. Um, Basically, you can prioritize things that are spoiled. So when you're dealing with Gleba stuff or fish, you can do the freshest first or the most spoiled thing first. So that is really neat as well. But yeah, so now we've got iron, Coolio. And this will extend way further down once it's full, but for now, it'll just look like this. And I need more belts. And then we'll get copper going, and I can make a proper, or at least a semi proper mall. But it seems like first we need some more good stuff. And I seem to have run out of iron for belts. And I've run out of copper. That's not where that goes. Copper for science. Okay. Yeah, exactly, Aloy. Like, Pyanodons had to do it that way because there wasn't another way to do it. But the new version is certainly, I think, better. All right, now let's put some iron in a chest. Uh, I should probably have a slightly less greedy solution. And I'm completely out of inserters because we're completely out of all sorts of stuff. So we'll hoover up a bit more iron here. And are we mining enough for all of this? Surely we are, right? Because that's eight, which is four per second. Oh, these numbers are so nice. These each use 0.31, which means six of these can run on two iron per second. Wow, it's actually almost the exact right number then. Ooh, the wire buttons. Um... No, they're not unlocked. I need the circuit network technology. So. No, no wire buttons yet. <laughs> hey, Sauron. Yeah, thanks. It's, uh, it's certainly been hard to not want to play space. Well, I have wanted to play Space Age. It's been hard to not do it. Mainly just because... There's so many things I want to try, you know, like it's like, oh, I just am so excited to build a space platform and mess with all the different elements. And I don't even know, you know, like what do the mechanics even work like in terms of how big you can make it? Like, is it a I don't even know like what 
what does the game do? How does it tell you those things? How do you, you know, I, I, I'm, I am having trouble even to, uh, using words right now to describe what I'm trying to say. But like when you go to build a space platform, we already know that like your size limited, but like what's limiting the size? Is there a weight to it that makes it go slower? Can you only build so many tiles? Like how does that, and again, don't spoil it if you know, I'm just excited to like try that out. Um, so. Wait, why is that unfortunate, Dave? I'm confused why that's unfortunate. Were you, were you imagining you could just circuit connect things from the beginning of the game? I'm confused what your concern is. And I also, what am I, what am I doing here? I need belts, that's what the problem is. Hopefully that's enough. Might not be. Because I want to put my smelting stacks next to each other. So we'll probably put the copper one over here. So let's see, why don't I copy this just so we can, the nice thing is I don't have to worry about bots building it uh, without me wanting them to. So that would go there. And then the next one would go about here and then here. So that's kind of the full size of it. So yeah, the copper one, the problem is I started a little too high to put the copper one next to it without covering up that iron. So I'll put the copper one like here. Okay, and now the copper, cause we have enough space here that this can just come straight over. Copper will actually come up from below. You could already circuit connect from the beginning before, what? What do you, you couldn't make circuits though. Dave, I'm confused on what you're talking about here. Red and green wire have always been locked behind uh, this technology. That's always been a thing. So I'm a little confused what you're saying. Oh, you're just saying that if if you already had blueprints that had red and green wire, in, well, yeah, but I assume that's still the case. I mean, maybe they've changed that, but I don't, what we've discovered now, I don't think implies that that isn't the case anymore. Okay, yeah, you can already do that. So. So it, it sounds like it's the same as it was before then. All right, uh, what are we doing here? So we need the, the coal to come in to here. That makes it unfortunate because you can still cheat. Oh, you're saying it's unfortunate that you can cheat. I see what you're saying. Um, I thought you were, okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, I don't really know how they could fix that easily, but it certainly is not the hugest of deals. You get wires pretty early in the game. I think the bigger problem would be for mod packs where you, you have to spend a really long time without wires, because there's not even much you would want to do with wires other than just weird finagly stuff that's for fun. It's not like you can get some serious advantages in the early game with wires. Um, <laughs> yeah, Soran, back in the day, back in my day, uh, you had to, you had to research ghosts and blueprinting. That was, that was way back in the day, though. All right, so have I done all that I can do? Yeah, so until we have green science, we are... Done with research. 
Uh, Conblim, that's actually the same year I started. I started in 2016. Okay, so what? Oh, I need a lot more iron. What am I doing here? All right. And then inserters and gears already have, so I should be able to handcraft a decent amount of all this. Yeah, yeah, Saron, I, I did see that. So wires work once it's unlocked once, it's available for any game forever going forward? So you're saying once I do the circuit research here, like, which will probably be in the next couple hours, then if I were to make a new free play game of Space Age, where I start with nothing and no, no tech researched, I'll still have the red and green wire buttons. Oh, okay, that is that is not something I knew. That's different. That's different than what I thought it was doing. I understand now. Okay, here's something I don't like. Um, I'm actually kind of confused by it. When you have the correct item over a ghost, it shows a red little selection box, almost like it's the wrong thing. I don't like that because it's the right. It's the same thing. If it was a different building, I'd like that it's red. If it's the same building, it should be green, right? Is that a bug? Um. F10. F10 it. Uh. Uh. What's what's the title here? Uh. The title is. Selection. I don't even know. Overriding. Blueprint ghost should be green with correct item. That's more the message. When you go to replace a blueprint ghost with the correct entity, the selection box should be green, not red, exclamation mark. Boom. I'm doing my part. All right. Um, now, I don't know if that's actually a bug or not. They might just be like, well, screw you. You just don't know how this game works. But. I have given my feedback. All right. So, copper. We've got the copper. And now. Maybe I should have the plates come up. And then stuff can kind of be over here rather than way down there. Yeah, I think I like that better. So. When I build the rest of it, I'll, I'll, I'll rearrange these things. But for now, we'll just bring the iron over. Um, I'm going to build that there just so I don't make it so I can't get that iron orb later. And now we are really running out of things. We need them all ASAP. Nothing worse than other people watching you type, <laughs> right? Everybody's looking over my shoulder. Grab more iron here. Let's grab all that we've collected. So that should be a good stockpile. Yeah, there we go. Now we can get some belts going. All right, so there's a lot of belts. I'll do a few hundred more for ammo. And then some more here for circuits. Are circuits more, um, ooh, Factoriopedia. They are more copper than iron. I couldn't remember. Again, such little vanilla gameplay I've done. <laughs> oh, it's time to stretch. You at home, you should stretch too. Ugh. Make sure you take care of your bodies. Mm. It's 
Good for you. Drink your liquids, stretch, get up once in a while. <laughs> you just realized I started in a desert. I did check our seed before we started. I do, um, I do have some trees, like medium sized forests. They're not like crazy dense, but they're, uh, they're not too bad. I did not lower the biter settings. There's certainly some variants. Uh, when I was looking at different seeds, you know, there were some that had nests that were five, five spawners rather than three nearby. Um, but they, they certainly seem tame compared to the death world I just did. And the nice thing is we've got some more iron right there. It's a small patch though. That's actually going to be problematic. That, that will be limiting us on the rate of iron long before it limits us on the amount of iron. So we will have to expand past that iron patch at some point. But not yet. Okay, so we've got iron, we've got copper. Um, I guess the problem here... Because like I said, I want these to be reversed and actually come up. So then the iron actually needs to go over the miner here. Like that. And then we have perfect spacing for the copper. All right, the beginning of a bus. Noise. So basically, I am not a hardcore bus player, but I at least like to have my resources semi-organized together. We're not going full spaghetti here. But I will do at least some semblance of a bus for a while to keep things organized. This, the mall will be a spaghetti mess, for sure. Don't worry about that. We're, 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 we're about to spaghetti pretty hard here. Uh, for that, we're going to need a lot of assembling machines, so we'll make sure we have enough of those. And then... Just making sure we've got enough everything else. I think we've got enough power, we've got enough coal for that power. I probably need a gun turret over here. Just for protection purposes of the smelting. And then another one up by the iron mine. Okay. You've never asked before, but why do I use a non-standard furnace stack? Who says it's non-standard? The fact that I'm going to hard disagree that there even is such a thing as a standard furnace stack. Um, and I mean, I'm on the Reddit a fair amount. Is, is there like one particular design that almost everybody seems to use? Because if there is, I certainly haven't. I mean, I was talking earlier about the decision of whether we go out to in or in to out. You know, sometimes sometimes I'll do the thing where you... And this is a useful trick, so I'm actually going to show it. Um, but, you know, you've got your belt of... Uh, you've got your belt and you... Belt of coal, belt of iron. And then you do this thing. And then you've got that, and then you've got this, and you can do half a belt with each. So that's another option, um, but I don't, I don't really see how that's any more standard or better. It's the same thing at the end of the day. Yeah, I, I so I talked about it earlier. the The reason I'm going inside to out rather than outside to in is no reason. It makes zero difference. The difference, I guess the, the reason you wouldn't do it the way I did it here is because you need undergrounds and you need, um, you actually end up using one more belt and you don't need long inserters. So there is a very good reason to not do what I did here. The reason I did it this way would be if you have more iron coming out 
Um, so. Yeah, so I, at the end of the day, like, it's not any different. I, I've wasted some resources by using long inserters or some underground belts, and things are only one wider. I'm already leaving a lot of empty space. One tile ain't gonna change anything. So, that's... I think the reason is because I didn't even know there was a standard furnace stack, which I like about <laughs> myself. Is I Now, you know, speedrunners have their own strategies, but I think the idea of people considering a speedrun strategy to be a standard strategy is a very wrong... I'm, I'm gonna use the word wrong way to think. That is... Speedrunning is not standard. Um, Speedrunning is a special particular circumstance that should not be considered the norm for anything other than speedrunning itself. So I will I will shut down the idea of speedrunning being standard if anyone's I'm not no one's specifically saying that in chat, but if that's what someone's thinking, I'm gonna say I disagree with you. Because speedrunning is not standard. Except for speedrunning. In which case obviously you need to do it the most efficient way. Um, and yeah, so for basic things you like standardization, well that's fine, but s standard, the word standard is already a loaded word, and I, if you're new to me, uh, you'll learn that I like to rant about these things once in a while. So, so as far as like, uh, standard goes, it's only standard if everyone agrees, right? Stand, the, the word standard, like, multiple people have to set a standard. Now you can set a standard for yourself, I think, if you like to play with things standardized, then that means you like to play in a certain way that you like to be consistent about. Thumbs up for that. That's great. If you think there is a standard, then that's where I'm going to push back a little bit. Now, there might be something where more Factorio players do it than not, just because it's A, something that they've seen that's very easy and efficient, or B, because... Like, some people are going to copy stuff they found online, but with basic designs, like, I'm going to look at a very simple example. Like, this way of doing miners, I'm going to say is pretty standard, but not because people agree that, like, you should do it this way. It's just, like, there's not that many ways to, to mine stuff onto a belt, and so a lot of people are going to end up doing it this way. A lot of people are going to separately arrive at doing it this way, because it's simple and easy. Now, there is technically a way to do it without the space in between. You know, this is how most people do it. And then if you're really being dense, uh, you can do it this way, but then you need the undergrounds like that. That would be maybe the other one that those two are probably the most standard ways to put uh, miners on an ore patch. And I'm using standard here with like air quotes because that's just how most people tend to do it. But there's not really that many solutions other than that. Like, you could space out the miners more if your goal is, like, minimum miners for patch coverage. But that's really... That's also standard if you were optimizing for that. So it's really, like, there's just not that many ways to solve this particular puzzle. So there is kind of a standard solution. Now, back to the, the smelting. In this case, I will agree that the other solution would have saved me some resources, and it would be one tile skinnier because I wouldn't have needed the long inserters. That being said, I don't think that's standard, because this exact solution, I think, is the one that the tutorial itself kind of creates for you. If I, like, I'm remembering hardcore, like, you know, almost 10 years ago, nine years ago or whatever, when I played the Factorio tutorial, I'm pretty sure one of the tutorials has this design. So if anything, wouldn't this be the standard? And the other people have, you know, optimized and made a different solution that's even better than the standard solution um because yeah if you're optimizing for cost or footprint i would say that this is not optimized as for whether it's standard i think that's a little too vague of a word because there's a lot of ways you can set up furnace stacks i mean you could set up furnace stacks with the the coal and the the copper mixed oh hey i just thought of another good reason by the way uh, I actually have a good answer for you now, in this particular case. I can't use the standard design, because I'm bringing the copper in from one side and the coal in from the other. The standard design doesn't work with that, because you have to smoosh them together 
for the other design to work. So there you go. There's your answer. I actually have a, a, a gameplay answer <laughs> as to why I need my version. Uh, anyway. Oh, thanks, Zekla. You like my solution. I have not seen Dosh's stagger designs, but let's get back to our mall design. Why don't we? Um, I, I love sushi belts, and I can tell you now, I love the idea of them. I don't actually use them all that often. Um, but we're going to use more of them in this playthrough. And the reason is... Am I spaced out enough for my bus? Sorry, I'm getting so distracted trying to do 15 things at once. But the reason we're going to use more of them, I'll do 12 away, is because we have the full belt reader. Yep, exactly, Riff. The full belt reader is going to change everything. It makes the idea of sushi so much easier. And so because we have the full belt reader, we're going to be able to do some some basic sushi stuff way better. Um, I think we actually need that to do two gear makers. And then uh, bring the iron down. OK, so then we're going to have gears. And now we're going to have I'm going to space them out by two. Let's uh, we're, we're not in a shortage of space here. So let's start with belts. And then we'll do inserters. I guess this should probably be the red one. This is that one. And I'm going to need circuits for some of these things too. So that means I need to make some circuits over here. Um, maybe I'll make them down here. So I haven't decided exactly how I want to do this yet. Is one circuit maker enough? Is two too many? I don't know. Now, speaking of standard, you know, this is an example of something that, like, a lot of people use. Um, so it could be standard. Someone could call it standard. But it there's certainly a lot of other ways to solve this as well. So, what's up, Fumbler? What's a full belt reader? So Morath, uh, basically you will be able to connect a wire to a belt and it will read the contents of the entire belt um, to your circuit network without having to connect every single belt tile because previously that's what you would have had to have done. Okay, so then we're gonna split off copper and then we're gonna do something like this. I'm certainly not going to need that much. Am I time lapsing the base? I am not. Maybe I should be. Um, oh, right. We don't have red belts to deal with the underground situation here. So we'll just do this. For the iron plates. OK. Some lamps up in here. And there's gears. Just do that. Yeah, I do like the idea of time lapses. I don't know the easiest way to actually do it. You can time lapse off a replay. How do you enable replay though? Don't you have to do that from the very beginning, which I haven't done, so it's too late at this point. Welcome to Space Age. For so for some reason I read that in my Welcome to Jurassic Park voice. And you have to not change versions throughout the entire save. Well, that certainly wasn't going to happen ever because they're going to be releasing a lot of patches in the next few days before the game publicly releases on top of 
uh, probably quite a few after the game launches publicly too. So I will want to be updating throughout that time. I guess we'll just do it this way. Now, I don't know if all of these actually even need something from both belts. That one needs the circuits, that one needs circuits and gears, that one needs gears, that one needs circuits. That one needs... I think, actually, I might have done that properly. I wasn't even really... I hadn't looked yet. <laughs> Alright, so... Yeah... As far as fast enough, I am I am aware that we will need fast inserters for some of this stuff. I just haven't gotten there yet in my planning. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put half of these in a box. Half of them will go on to provide belts for you guys. And then in a box. I don't like that the boxes aren't all in the same spot, though. I do I do kind of like having them all equally spaced. So I might waste an inserter here. Do something like this. We'll go to three stacks of underground, one stack of splitters, and a bunch of stacks of belts, because they're really cheap. Like, regular belts are extremely cheap. Okay. So there we go. That's good. Yay! We've got all that done, and now you guys need inserters. And now I can have those. Get two stacks of longies, four, four stacks of you. And from now on, fast inserters only. Yeah, baby. What's up, Tantric? Thanks for the sub. Yeah, Zekala, we'll get your we'll get your name on the right side of the iron patch. That's perfect. We got some name in game redemptions we gotta get going with. I did do the hydrate. Oh my gosh, we're already 52 minutes into episode two. Y'all, this game is flying by. Before we know it, we'll be we'll be at the victory screen. Before we know it, we'll be at the victory screen. Okay, how's the the rate on all of this? So it looks like you need to be a fast inserter. I'm guessing... Actually, the output here that needs to be a fast inserter. Which I can do. We can do this. Those going a bit better. Um, the cable out needs to be fast inserters. And I think with the two inserters, it's technically not enough but it's close, so that should be enough. And then is what, is the output too slow? I think, yeah, I think regular inserters are actually slightly underneath one per second, which is obnoxious. Um, it would be nice if they did one per second. Okay, sweet. So then what else do we need on the mall? I, do I care about iron chests? Like, I usually just handcraft iron chests. I feel like the number of chests you actually need is low enough that that really works fine, but maybe I should? Um, pipes I definitely want on them all. So what I'm gonna do... I'm gonna set up a new set of buildings down here that then output up to chests here. So, this is going to be pipes. And 
and then I don't know. Again, pipes are cheap, so that's I don't know. Eight hundred's fine. Um, we're out of fast inserters. Oh no! But wait, we have thirty-seven more just waiting for me. Wonderful. I am very ready for medium power poles. I'll let that go to four stacks because when you're building a big fluid network, these can surprise you with how many you need. All right, anything else from here? Lamps could be kind of nice to not have to deal with. So I might do those on this side. Wait, I need... Super annoying, actually. Uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that, and then this. This, so we're gonna steal, because this is such a small amount that we're gonna be stealing on average, right? Because like lamps are pretty cheap and I only place a few of them here and there, so. This should be more than fine. Get a few stacks of lamps going. Ammo. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess we have to kill biters for a while. I could probably do ammo. And then we'll get to this page here in a second. Is there anything else military? Uh, radars. I don't need enough to automate those yet. Armor wall walls, but I don't have stone here yet. So that's not a thing to worry about. Um, let me make a few more assembling machines here. Oh yeah, super force building. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so good. Yeah, let's do ammo. That's just a basic, basic one here. We'll go to 500, um, turrets would be good. I might make its own gear maker. I'll give turrets its own gear maker. This mall is cleaner than I kind of expected it to be, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> um, this is far, this is far more clean than, than most Crydax malls end up being. I don't know what's gotten into me. I apologize for, for the lack of spaghetti. Uh, I know for some people this is extremely spaghetti, but if you've seen me before, you know this is not normal. Uh, alright, so then we need mining drills, assemblers, probably labs, maybe? Maybe not? I've usually handcrafted those in most playthroughs, and that's been fine. Repair pack, same thing. Uh, I do need stone for those guys. All right, well, let's get uh, the the drills and assemblers. So, particularly with assemblers, I might actually put them on this side of things because we're going to want to expand to include blue at some point and yellow. So I'll give that some space so we can fit other stuff in later. And then we'll bring the circuit gear belt down here. So that we've got access to both here. And then do that. There's miners and assemblers. Uh, ammo stacks to 200. Oh, wait. No, it doesn't. <gasps> it doesn't. Ammo only stacks to 100. <gasps> Gasp. Dear God, where's our ammo gone? Actually, I think that's helpful. Um, it does mean it's a little. Oh, it's because of it's because of space stations and rockets. I get it. It was balancing around killing uh, killing asteroids. I actually think it's nice because then you're. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. 
I guess for personal turret creeping, it's a little bit of a negative, but overall, I think it's fine. All right, we are actually out of iron, so now that I have more inserters, do I have enough? I need more belts. Um, we're definitely going to be strapped on resources for a little bit here while all of those are buffering. But I can help that out a little bit by... Getting more iron going. Alright, so let's actually do this the correct direction. Alright, and then we copy this. Here. That will eventually be the full belt. For now I'll just take it to here. I am being a little wasteful here, not using uh, yellow inserters. One thing I, I can't remember, which ones are more energy efficient? Um, in terms of how much power the inserter is using for each item swing. I think fast inserters might actually be more efficient. That might be the saving grace. If not, then yeah, we're just being wasteful, and that's fine. Turret creeping, it's a good thing. Yeah, that way you can... Well, the problem is it also reduces how much ammo you can take with you in your inventory by the same amount. So, at least in terms of inventory to turret creep ratio, it's the same, but that means you won't... If you're taking a thousand bullets, you can ac accidentally get up to ten stacks rather than just five into turrets. But it also means you still can't carry that much so overall, I'd say it mostly cancels out in that sense. Um, and I am going to need a lot more miners, which I have. So let's get, get cracking on that. All right. I do like when these are spaced the same as the ones across. Mostly just for visual. Doesn't matter. There we go. Oh yeah, Harmony, the trains and the train interrupt schedules are gonna be so cool. Hey, thank you so much for the 500 bits, TNT. Yeah, I'm definitely when I when I knew Space Age was coming out, I was like, I gotta start, I gotta start fresh. I can't, I can't take a bunch of blueprints and a whole base going in. That just that's not my style. Um, you need to put some iron in a chest. Maybe I'll do that actually where the um, where the two. Yeah, we'll do this right here. Okay, so this is for stockpiling purposes, though I already have a lot of iron, so not really needed. Will I do a multiplayer Space Age server? Um, probably. Uh, that kind of depends on the on the people in the Discord. If you're interested in it, then hop over to the Discord. There is a channel called Community Server, and you can start chatting about it there. I'm sure there are some other people that are interested, so we might be able to get something going there. I myself probably wouldn't host it because um, I don't have a good solution. I would be willing to uh, pay for one that's, you know, like 10 bucks a month or something. If so, cost wise, I'd be fine 
you know, hosting a Crydex server for the the people on the Discord. But as far as actually the running of it and the networking, I'm not knowledgeable about that kind of stuff, so I'm not I'm not the guy to to actually set all that up. Oh, look at all these delicious shopping ingredients or shopping results. Mall mall items. <sighs> look at all those lamps. I love lamp. Love lamp. All right, well, I think we will call this the end of episode two for the YouTube series. Again, for those here on Twitch, I'm still streaming live. Don't go anywhere. Uh, but for those of you on YouTube, let me know what you guys think in the comments about Space Age so far. We're having a blast. Cannot wait to get to some of those new features, but it'll still be a while. So we just will enjoy the ride, take it slow, and as always, uh, see you guys in the next episode.